session. Okay, so we are recording the session. So let me just recap and go over AussieCAD very quickly because we spent a lot of time on AussieCAD. Um, so unfortunately, sorry, you guys didn't hear. And also I forgot to record the session, but higher time frame, basically, we're in a nice descending structure. We're coming towards the lows of this descending structure, towards support in this descending structure. So obviously it does not make sense for us to be looking for selling opportunities into higher time frame support. Rather, we look for buying opportunities. So high time frame, understanding that we've already given our third touch of the structure. Maybe we're expecting that a reversal structure will form in this area in preparation for that upside momentum. Going down on a four hour, what we observed is we've got a nice set of equal lows there. A nice momentum shift here observed by this bullish engulfing, which is an obvious area where other people aggressively bought. So we want to buy where other people are buying. Looking at the overall structure, we are in a corrective structure right now. We do have most recent downside momentum. So obviously what we kind of trying to see happen is we want to see this downside momentum follow through, obviously break below these equal lows, tap into our POI. And this is basically where we're looking for reversal structures, double bottoms, inverse head and shoulders, descending structures, anything that will give us a reason to buy. Cause and effect. <laughs> We've got a reason for an effect to happen in this area here, because according to our technical analysis, there might be a cause of upside momentum from here. <laughs> Let's go to Aziz's Frank, guys. Uh, so Aziz's Frank, maybe high time frame weekly structure. Just to recap, so we're nice and bullish on Aussie CAD. Um, Aziz's Frank, just to recap here. So looking at the overall structure, we had some upside. We had a corrective structure here. We had more upside violating that corrective structure over there. I forgot my keyboard when I went to turn the music down. But otherwise, most recent price action, just to focus on just what's going on here on a daily, is obviously we spoke about this small, this smaller corrective structure here, and then obviously this momentum that broke this corrective structure. And in this corrective structure, what we do see, just looking at the stream levels of structure, is that we've got a nice support over here. Obviously, resistance over here, price action came lower low. We've got price action retesting these highs here, giving us a nice corrective structure. Downside momentum, obviously, most recent price action or most recent momentum on a daily is to the downside. But where are we? We are or at least are towards some sort of a support. So we know that the lower or the closer we get to this area here, the less we want to sell, the more we want to buy. Obviously, right now we've got most recent downside momentum. We've got a nice corrective structure here, and that can help us formulate a nice bearish bias because we are still, if we just look at the most recent price action on a daily, focusing just here, downside momentum, corrective structure, we are still towards the highs of this corrective structure here. We are still in and around that high area. So obviously, if we're stuck in a range, we look for selling probability from the high of the range, buying probability from the low of the range which makes perfect sense according to higher time frame analysis that the lower we get here, the more we want to look for buys. So obviously, corrective structure, let's just isolate that corrective structure there or drop down on a four hour, maybe you'll see price action just a little bit more better. Drop down onto a four hour, we isolate this corrective structure, taking into account whatever support we have there, extreme support, obviously, because price action is going up, but we are moving to the upside in a corrective manner. And then taking into account whatever resistance we have over here, um, cool. Whatever resistance we have over here, looking at this overall structure, what we've got here is price action. These are our extreme highs. Obviously, we came to these extreme highs. We broke above. We broke back below. Obviously, we down. We 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 below this previous resistance area over there. So, looking at things on a four hour, what we're going to do is we're going to jump left since price action has already tapped into. Whatever POIs we were looking at in here last week, we can see we got a nice spike for whatever sales someone could have jumped into. We don't care about last week's trades anymore. We're going to look at a new POI. So the high, uh, next higher POI, obviously here, this one is invalid anymore. We want to look to sell a little bit higher, or at least we want to find an extreme high where we can sell with good probabilities. If we look inside of this momentum to the downside, we can see a nice bearish engulfing inside of here. So let me just expand this so we can see the individual candlesticks. You can see a beautiful bearish engulfing candlestick over here. Obviously, nice momentum shift, nice evidence of someone aggressively selling from this area. The same way we had momentum shift on a smaller, the momentum shift that we're looking for inside of here was on a one hour, on a 15 minute. But nonetheless, 
we traded at those bearish engulfings because those were areas where someone pumped market down here, breaking structure over there. Same thing over here, someone aggressively bearish engulfing to violate structure over there on a smaller time frame. So that's kind of where we want to sell. We want to sell where other people are selling because um, we're lazy. We don't want to gamble. We want market to just, we, we, we want trading to be simple. We want trading to be a lot simpler. Cut out all of the, the low probability trades and then kind of help us focus on high probability trades. So basically inside of the structure, since we can clearly see that we'll definitely have to drop down on a lower time frame to make sense of whatever's going on here, what I can do is I can look at the most recent structure and take into account or at least realize that, okay, price action, this is the most recent high. We violated this high, we created a new higher high. And obviously even here, we're creating some lows. So we're just isolating the most recent price action to kind of try and make sense of what's going on inside of here. Why are we trying to do this? So that we don't enter into low probability trading opportunities inside of where we can clearly see that potential to be chopped around inside here is there if we bought or sold anywhere inside of here you guys can see that from june 22nd until right now you're probably still at break even because market has just been chopping up and down so yes even if we jump into this trade we're jumping into an area where we can clearly see chop has been happening and we can expect to get stuck inside some chop so what we're going to do is we're going to look to trade at the extreme highs and the extreme lows because price action inside of here is showing us that it's destroying whoever's doing whatever at least on a four hour, maybe on a lower time frame, there's nice uh, day trading opportunities, but we're not there now. So otherwise, looking at what the probabilities here, what I want to do for my selling opportunities, since downside momentum is here, since we are maybe potential break and a retest of higher time frame structure, whatever the case is, since we are towards the highs of this corrective structure, I would rather look for downside momentum. If price action continues to move without me, then I can shift my bias and look for bullish price momentum. So otherwise, looking at the setup that I'm kind of gonna be looking to take here is I wanna see price action basically coming towards these highs here. We clearly have a nice POI here that will give us good trading opportunity or at least good probabilities, better pro sell, sell probabilities than anywhere else in terms of risk to reward ratio, in terms of a lot of other things. So otherwise, what I wanna do is I'm gonna be paying attention to the two things that we're always looking at. We always focus on how does price action come to an area where we want to take action if we come there if price action comes there correctively then we can look for risk entries if price action comes here impulsively then we have to wait for a reversal structure to avoid getting stuck in a market where clearly there are more buyers than sellers because we came there impulsively then we have to wait for a reversal structure to form so obviously if price comes up correctively risk entry impulsively reduce risk entry so Simple enough, guys, I'm waiting for price action to come to my extreme highs. Here is where I will start to look for my reversal structures. If price action gives me a setup, if we come here correctively, then I will trade without price action tapping into this POI. But if we come here impulsively, then I want to want to want to trade inside of this POI here. So I'm sell bias, nice and sell bias for Aussie Swiss Frank next week. Uh, we're just waiting for price action to see if price action will actually deliver us higher prices, bring us to these extreme highs where we can sell a little bit more comfortably, better risk to reward ratio as well. Let's go on to some AJ. Our, our, our Caesar is in the building, man. What's good? What's good? <laughs> nice to see the mentors here as well. Nice to see the mentors here as well. I see your flames there. I see your flames there, man. <laughs> AJ, so higher time frame pair, JPY code pair. So we'll look at, um, or at least just reference higher time frame structure just so that we know where we are so that even when we when we're making decisions on a smaller time frame we understand what higher time frame probabilities are will we find higher time frame tr traders maybe jumping into that position to allow our winners to run or will we be buying in an area for example maybe on a lower time frame where higher time frame sellers might be looking to sell where yes maybe we might be getting into a nice buy on a smaller time frame but maybe that buy is gonna take a long time because higher time frame is redistributing maybe for downside or whatever the case we don't know but we want to get context as to where are we within the structure so that we make better decisions as we drop down so our higher time frame we've got this nice ascending structure here in this ascending structure first touch second touch we're at the third touch we're doing something nice and and complex there so we'll go down onto the daily just most recent price action see what's cooking here what's cooking here price action is giving us higher highs and higher lows 
but we are doing so in a corrective manner because every high is being broken above and broken below. We're not respecting highs as support, previous resistance as support. That's not what's happening. Corrective price action. So we are moving to the upside in a corrective manner. So obviously we take into account whatever corrective structures forming here, I don't know. Could be anything, could be an ascending structure, could be a head and shoulders, could be whatever you classify as a corrective structure, it could turn into literally anything. <laughs> so otherwise, looking at what we see now is we do see an ascending structure, at least what we can assume might be an ascending structure. Last week, we were looking for sell bias trading opportunities. Why? Because we were at this resistance somewhere where we saw sellers selling aggressively. Those sellers even gave us a new lower low. Obviously, we came up here correctively. So naturally, we're looking for sell bias trading opportunities. Looking at where we are, we still really haven't moved any, any, any distance away from this resistance this week so we'll still hold the exact same bias obviously lower time frame setups might be different to a degree but the bias in general we're still at the exact same place in terms of higher time frame so i don't see any reason why i should change and start to look to buy for whatever reason from here into this resistance and obviously risk to reward ratio there's another important resistance up there yes if price action does move to the upside it's going to set us up better for a selling opportunity so going down onto a four hour let me just delete all of this nonsense that we've got here and maybe we'll just highlight that there going down onto a four hour so four hour obviously we're looking at a little bit more nature theory seeing what's going on there we observe this nice ascending structure there so let's just take into account whatever extreme lows we have there and then a nice ascending structure there take into account whatever extreme highs we've got here and we've got a nice ascending structure for ourselves to kind of try and isolate where can we get better probabilities than where price action is right now. If we look left, looking left, we've got this resistance up here, extreme high, major resistance area over there. And if we look at the most recent price action, we can see that there's an area that kind of does converge where we've got maybe if someone's looking for horizontal support and resistance, they might be looking to sell at this resistance. If someone's looking at an ascending structure, they might be looking to sell at this resistance trend line. So we see an area where something is obviously converging over there. So all I'm going to be doing, nice and simple, I'm sell bias on AJ. We've got an area where we can look for as to how is price action coming up here and what does price action do when we're at our POI. And those two pieces of information will always be enough for me to make a decision on whether I'm going to do something or whether I'm going to sit on my hands. So sell bias for AJ, looking for price action to come up to this third touch area here. Come up correctively, we can look for a risk entry. Come up impulsively, we look for a reversal structure. Let's go on to some AU. So AU, higher time frame structure over here. So looking at the higher time frame structure, still momentum, nice corrective structure over there. So we isolate what's happening, just most recent price action, or at least let's just go down to a daily. Um, We'll still be able to see what what's going on on a weekly so otherwise still as usual or at least let me just remind or recap what i chose to do was i did choose to in the past maybe not add a support trend line but i feel like maybe now i would want to add a support trend line just taking into account my extreme lows and holding into that maybe maybe a you can come and break below this low over here and if AU does come and break below that low there Maybe I shouldn't be all that bothered and switch up my bias and just start to sell AU or whatever the case is. But looking at AU, what we do have here and an important reason why we were bullish bias and I still feel like why I would still want to maybe hold on to my bullish bias just for now. I can sit on my hands and if maybe there is a sell, if AUD base pairs do sell, I mean, I can see a lot more other clearer setups that give me much more better selling opportunities or at least probabilities on a AUD base pair to sell rather than AU. So on AU, I'm gonna keep my bullish bias, just wait for price action to deliver itself to where I will get better probabilities to make a decision. But explaining to you guys what's going on here is higher time frame. obviously we're coming towards some type of support. I don't know why my charts are not loading. I think maybe network is slow um, or something, but okay, there we go. Coming, we're coming down to this nice support over here, right? But also if we go down and we look on a four hour, we'll see this on a four hour. On a four hour, obviously we, there's a couple of momentum shifts or nice momentum shift inside there where maybe we wanna be bullish or maybe we wanna be biased. Otherwise, looking at the daily. Daily, we've got this support here. 
that obviously we're expecting maybe price action wants to retest this area if we're going to continue momentum to the upside but clear enough we've broken below this area what does that mean for me on a four hour is very simple i'm not gonna make any buying trading or any bullish decisions as long as price action is below that level of support price action is below that level of support then it means that we're not being corrective around there. Price, we, what I want to see is price action breaking back above and closing above this level of support here from a daily that we've got there, basically a retest level from a daily. So on AU, I think I'm not going to be looking for any selling opportunities, but we do have a nice POI here on a four hour where we can look to buy. So on a four hour, obviously, if we look at where do we see buyers coming into the market, buyers that have been able to break resistance or violate the level of structure, we've got a nice bunch of buyers that jumped in somewhere here by this bullish engulfing. Why are my charts doing this? We've got a nice momentum shift here, nice bullish engulfing. Price action has never come back to that bullish engulfing ever since we formed it. So what I want to see is price action coming towards that POI and this POI will give me an area where if I look for reversals inside of here on a smaller time frame, on a 15 minute, on a five minute, whatever I use as my trading time frame, I will get better opportunities to buy. If price action breaks below this area here, I'm not looking to do anything until we violate this low, obviously, and we form a reversal structure at my support line or whatever the case is. That's the only other time I'm going to look to buy. Otherwise, for selling opportunities, it's too late already. Obviously, we're coming towards some support. Even if you wanted to sell now, not a lot of risk to reward ratio. So what I'm going to do simply is just wait for price action to come down into this POI. This is where I am looking for upside continuation. If we want to be overly technical. We can draw some stuff there, maybe to, to help our livers accept trading in this area here and maybe just accept some probabilities or whatever the case is there. Maybe we can just wait for price action to come down and tap into this support trend line if you don't see this as a POI. First touch, second touch, third touch, fourth touch, still support trend line. We want to buy at support. We can't sell into support. So bullish buyers for AU, this is our POI over there. Price action comes down and taps into there. That's where we're looking to buy. Let's go into some Sus Yen. Okay, so Susien ran away from us last week. Uh, she gave us, for the first time in a very long time, she gave us a beautiful selling opportunity with very, very, very nice probabilities. But she just didn't follow through on the same day that we were looking to enter. Anyway, just most recent price action on, on Susien. I kind of just want to focus on what's going on here. What's going on here? I've got extreme highs here. And I've got extreme lows here. And that's basically all I'm using to make decisions. Jeez, wrong tool. And I've got extreme lows here. All I'm using to make decisions on smaller time frames. If we come to a daily wheel here, you see that price action is towards some sort of a resistance. So let's just wait for our charts to load. Cool. Price action is coming towards some sort of um, basically resistance. We saw sellers coming into the market here. We saw sellers coming into the market here. So obviously resistance, more of a zone than an area, but we saw that there is some sell sensitivity that's happening inside of this area. So obviously the closer we get to this area, the less we want to buy, the more I want to look to sell. The closer we get to our extreme lows, the less I want to sell, the more I want to buy. So looking at uh, what's going on on a smaller time frame? Let's just drop down onto the four hour and just isolate some structure. See where our sell buys trading opportunities or probabilities will come into at least try and sell this pair again. Hopefully, this time she'll allow us because we did actually get the entry, but she came back um, to break even. I think, yeah, she stopped us out like twice at break even or something like that. She was just refusing to give us the money, but it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, so that sell that we were looking for, this is the impulsive move that we were going to, we were going to hit TP long time because our TPs were somewhere inside of here. We were going to hit TP very long time ago, but this redistribution that was happening inside of here took one day longer than the day that we were looking for our entry. <laughs> but looking at things, resistance, okay, cool. We don't have any POIs up here besides considering that we have resistance. 
So what we're going to do is quite simple. We're going to focus on the structures. Obviously, you guys know we're trading Susiana on a smaller time frame, right? So I think maybe let's just go down. Let's allow ourselves to do analysis of smaller time frames like one hour and lower. So on this pair, obviously, we're looking for structures because structures are always going to give us areas of better probability. So what I'm going to do is isolate whatever one hour structure I've got here, but some sort of an ascending structure or some sort of a whatever. See that, okay, I do have potential for price action to give me a nice third touch of structure. Does this third touch of structure align with anything else? If we do come up here, then definitely, okay, cool. I might align with some resistance over there. If we come a little bit higher, I might align with some higher resistance over there. So I've got some POIs. I've got an area where there's convergence happening, where there might be more sellers than buyers looking to make decisions at that area. So obviously, you pay attention to the same two things. How does price action come here? What do we do at this area? The what is our entry trigger? How is basically going to tell us whether we should be aggressive in looking to enter or we should be passive? Sell buyers for CCN. We're basically just waiting for price action to come up, give us a nice third touch, better probabilities to sell from this high here, better risk to reward ratio. Let's go on to some New Zealand dollar CAD, see what's going on in the chats there. Um, so AU, we're looking for sells. Nope, we're looking for buys on, on AU. I'm looking for some bullish buys price action on AU. Let me just show you there and just recap. It's obviously a buy with patience. Um, if maybe I'll, okay, I'll do it. I'll do it at the end of the session. I'll show you guys which pairs are going to be higher on my watch list and which pairs are going to be, you know, the patience pairs, the ones that we're going to exercise a bit of patience on. So let's just run through the analysis quickly because I see we've got like about seven minutes left. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be a bit quick on New Zealand dollar CAD. So we just do the daily. So long story, very, very short on New Zealand dollar CAD. Things will stay basically the same as last week. Once our chart loads, um, I'll do the analysis. Come, come on, charts. There we go. So long story short, we're in some sort of a descending structure. We don't know what the hell is going on here. What are we forming? I don't know. I'm not even going to try and guess and force myself into unnecessary uh, trades. But conclusion being is that this is our most recent low that we have. Obviously, the closer we get to this low, the more we want to look for buys rather than sells. The closer we get to this high, the more we want to look for sells rather than buys. These are the only two extreme levels of structure that we have to be able to make sense of the information that's going on here. Anyway, going down onto a four hour. For our just most recent price action, so we've got conclusion being is that we've got basically no POIs inside of here that we can look to trade off, like no nice fancy point of interest or whatever. All we're doing to look for entries is focusing on most recent price action and making decisions based off that. So most recent price action, nice and beautiful descending structure. The kind of descending structure that I would trade on any pair, any time. But otherwise, okay, cool. Yeah, we didn't get a, a nice third touch, but I will still trade this pair. I think the way that I, <laughs> I'm planning to now. So conclusion being, we had our low, we broke below that low, we broke back above. We had our second low, we broke below that second low and we broke back above. So obviously we broke below this low here and we broke back above this level of structure. What am I looking for? I'm simply looking for price action. Since we have momentum over here, this is our momentum. Every market goes through impulse, correction, impulse. All I'm doing is waiting for my corrective structure to retest a level of structure that I've broken below and broken back above for upside continuation of whatever descending structure is going on here. Obviously, higher time frame biases. We've got descending structure. Okay, let me, let me just go up to the weekly just so that we can see why we want to buy here rather than sell. Cool. We add support. Cool. Higher time frame. Descending structure, first touch, second touch, third touch. That's our higher time frame analysis. That's why we don't want to sell on lower time frames inside of here because there is no risk to reward ratio according to the, the theory that we use. Yeah, cool. So New Zealand dollar CAD, 100% nice and bullish. We've got our nice POI there, our nice descending structure. All we're looking for is corrective structure to retest there and we buy. New Zealand dollar yen, I'm going to be quite quick on New Zealand dollar yen because this is going to be one pair that I don't think I'm going to do anything on unless we move from where we are now. But New Zealand dollar yen is preparing for something very big. We can clearly see momentum and we've just been contracting ever since. It's kind of a corrective structure. 
inside of a corrective structure, inside of a corrective structure, inside of a corrective structure. It just goes on and on and on. So we're preparing for something very explosive. I don't want to involve myself. I'd rather trade Swiss yen or AJ. So New Zealand dollar yen, I'm sitting completely um, off this pair for next week. So nothing that we're going to do on you. No even analysis that I'm going to do. Otherwise, any analysis, since we are ranging, simple enough, sell probabilities from the high, buy probabilities from the low. Let's go on to US 30, just so that we can talk about something a little bit more interesting. As much as US 30 isn't so interesting this week, I feel like the interesting bit has gone past. Let's just isolate whatever descending structure we've had there, higher time frame structure, cool uh, level of structure that we've been wanting to look at for a while, cool. There we go. So looking at the overall structure, taking into account where we are within the structure, what's going on here, we've got most recent momentum to the downside. We've got a nice momentum shift over there, nice level of structure where we were looking to buy previously. And as well as price gave us another momentum shift away from this level, nice bullish engulfing. And you guys can see, we even managed to break resistance. So whoever bought from here, they were enough to be more than the sellers that sold from here because price action has broken resistance. So what I want to do is I do want to look for some upside continuation as price action comes closer towards these support structures there. So let's just go down onto a smaller time frame, see how we're going to formulate or find this damn opportunity to buy because she's just being very sellish. Sellish, this is if that's a word. Otherwise, coming into what's going on here on a four hour is basically almost almost nothing. Um, but on a one hour, I promise you there, there is some action. On a one hour, there is some action. So basically, we've got this nice POI over here, right? You guys can see inverse head and shoulders. There is a bullish engulfing here that we can use as a POI. So let me just do this quickly because we've got like two minutes and some seconds left. There we go. Ah, oh, it's on 15 minutes. Damn it. I know the smaller time frames are a lot more interesting in terms of opportunities on US 30 for me. So just allow me to go down on a smaller time frame just so that we, we're not hanging in the air. And I'm telling you guys, we're going to exercise patience on here since we can't see those levels of structure on higher time frame. But basically, all I'm waiting for is yes, I can sell but I can con find continuations to the downside. I'm gonna to explain to you guys now once our charts load. Cool, there we go. So what I'm simply looking for is I can look for continuations to the downside. If we're on a one hour, we'll find out that we're at support. We cannot sell from here, but we've broken below this previous support with momentum where if we come in a corrective manner, we can look for a break and a retest from here for downside continuation. If we get to this area on US 30, there is no way that I'm ever going to sell US 30 anywhere close to this area here. Here, I'm 100% only looking for bullish bias price action. Um, in terms of any structures that we can isolate or whatever the case is, all I want to do is maybe just isolate some support so that we can see that, okay, cool, price action does have a reason to react in this area other than just this momentum shift to this bullish engulfing that we observed on a smaller time frame. So that's my bias for US 30. Right now, you guys can see anything that's purple, we're looking to sell next week. Anything that's blue, we're looking to buy next week. Anything that's orange, we're looking to not do anything on next week. So US 30, for now, we can look for downside continuation, but as closer we get to here, more we wanna buy. Guys, it says less than a minute. I think Zoom is gonna end. So um, yeah. Let there be peace in the streets. I think I do see some questions there. So we'll find out another session where we can answer questions and be specific. But otherwise, let there be peace, guys. Cheers.